Well, welcome to all of you to our second Startup Ride night here in Copenhagen. We're excited so many of you came. That's a double up from, from last time. Um, we're really happy you're here. Uh, not so much for us. Michael will lead the interview um, in just a second. Before that, um, we want to thank our sponsors. Um, Bernd Berg, Martin Feder will um, uh, introduce Morten and say some things in just a second. Before that, Lila from this pretty awesome space. I hope you got a chance to, to look around. I think it's a amazing atmosphere, you can feel a little like the San Francisco garage feeling. So Lila will tell you about something about this space. In terms of organization, um, you see some hashtags around. Um, feel free to engage on Twitter. Morten's uh, hashtag is at ML, ours is Startup Grind, uh, CPH. Use the hashtag Twitter, um, discuss whatever. Um, in the end there will be a Q&A session, so save some good questions for Morten. Um, and now, um, thanks to Lila for hosting us. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Right in the back. Well, thank you for coming to Dare to Mention. That's actually also a hashtag in case anybody would want to use that. Uh, we'd appreciate it. Thank you uh, very much for coming. Um, I own this garage. I bought it. Uh, yeah. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, but, but I thought it was really cool because I wanted to hang around a lot of the startups who were one ourselves. Uh, you met Chris, who was in the bar as well. Uh, if you see him again, uh, you know, give him a high five or something. It's his birthday, so you know I told him we invited a bunch of people. So, uh, so anyway, he's hanging out in the bar. Um, so anyway, we bought this place. Um, it's 1,300 square meters, and uh, we filled it up with a bunch of really cool entrepreneurs. We sort of uh, we believe very much in diversity, so that means we have tech startups, but we also have a crazy guy who builds all the birdhouses and stuff, and we have a guy who makes urban gardens, and we have very many different people. We're sort of, uh, we're sort of uh, picky on who gets to go in, but, um, but we're happy to talk to anybody who wants to uh, rule the world, basically, and, uh, and who's ambition, ambitious with their business. So basically, those are the ones that we want to talk to here. And obviously, you can also use the space for really cool uh, different uh, things. So I hope to get to see uh, a lot of you here again at a different time. Um, I was convinced today was a pizza day because usually we don't eat that kind of food here. We only eat brain food so that people can get even smarter and, and build their business even better. So this was an exception, but uh, what kind of an exception uh, to make for a started run? Thank you so much for, your, for coming here. We really appreciate it. So enjoy the evening and I hope to see you later at the bar. Uh, the microphone, uh, to, do you need the microphone? I, I'm not sure. But we will try. Uh, <laughs> I need to stand here because it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's really a privilege to uh, be one of the sponsors here and uh, getting an opportunity to buy some pizzas because uh, then I can crack the joke that that's the only free lunch you ever get from a lawyer. <laughs> 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 you have to laugh also. <laughs> That's also the only laugh you would ever have. <laughs> the other thing uh, that is great for me is to have the privilege to introduce uh, my old friend, uh, Morten Look, uh, And I thought I would do that with kind of a, a personal angle. Uh, because if you imagine a flashback, it would be something like 1996 or something like that. Uh, I was visiting a, a young guy at an office in the middle of Copenhagen. I think they, they sold uh, routers or something, some hardware uh, before, but now they were going to do uh, internet uh, web agency business and so on. And uh, I was talking to this guy, he seemed pretty smart. The best thing, he actually gave me a t shirt uh, for a new magazine he was doing. Uh, I think it was called E Magazine at that time. And I, uh, that was actually not that. Not that you're not doing anything else of quality, but that is really that was really quality in the sense that I have it still. <laughs> <laughs> after, after, after you after you've been through some kind of a, a more healthy regimen of food the last couple of years, I can actually feel it. <laughs> so that was back in '95 uh, or '96 or something like that. Uh, the guy was Morton, and he was actually one of the founders of one of the very first Danish web agencies at that time. And then if we fast forward a little bit to just uh, the height of uh, the dot-com bubble, 
uh, at that time, I remember I was uh, at a party outside in uh, Hotman, the old Navy station, uh, a cool, uh, even cooler new uh, web ADC Neo Edeo that had just been formed and was, of course, using most of their first uh, in money from the invoices to have a great party there. And uh, I remember I spoke to some of the people there and they said that we actually have some of the owners of the way we have this uh, fourth partner, uh, we don't know actually what to do with him, but we actually said, why, why don't you do uh, an incubator or something like that? Because then, then you are off uh, having customers and you don't have a clue about design and things like that, but, but do this kind of incubator thing. That was actually one of the first incubators in, uh, in Europe, or I think one of the first incubators at least in Denmark, and that was Morten who was actually in charge of that. Uh, not that the, I think the other guys were right, of course, but I think they made a good choice there. Uh, then, beyond the, uh, the dot com bubble burst, uh, and one of the uh, one of the guys uh, who had the guts to actually be one of the first to resurface after that, that was also Morten. And he, I remember we had a small club of people that were sort of uh, casualties uh, of, of the dot com bubble in the sense of all of us had thought we would become really millionaires, and so we wanted to sponsor a big project. But then what happened was that the guy who was supposed to sponsor actually had more money than we had that time, with the exception of the lawyer, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but, but uh, we were sitting, I think it was my place, and uh, uh, I would have brought the video, I couldn't find it, uh, but uh, Morton was explaining back in, I think it must have been 2002 or three how Wi-Fi was going to be the next big thing. And uh, obviously, the, the other people in the room, me and some other guys, actually Thomas, the guy you probably met last time, formed the company and failed miserably. The only guy who actually didn't join was Morton. That was really a good idea, because that was really a bad company. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's take, just go one or two years ahead. And we were having a party, actually, in the same room that we had the Copenhagen for the win. Uh, event a couple of a month ago, uh, the same group. Uh, Morten was always late, but he joined and he had brought a guy uh, who had s seemed to be a little bit socially not so adept. Uh, <laughs> not not Morten, uh, but, but uh, this guy, uh, he, he, he was sitting, he came, and all of us who thought of were really big guys, uh, not in size, but, but uh, in, in sort of stature in other ways. So <laughs> why, why is bringing this guy? We have this small club of really seasoned, uh, experienced entrepreneurs who knows everything that, that, that goes on. And why is this guy there? And this guy was talking about that he was going to do something voice over IP. And everybody said, wow, come on. I mean, that's been done. And we've been seeing that. And that's not going to happen. None of us uh, gave him much thought. The only one who gave him some thought was actually one. And I think that company that became Skype. Uh, so that's, that's uh, more than that's unfortunately also awesome. <laughs> me. And then, then I think the last thing I want to mention uh, before handing it over to, to Michael was that uh, uh, I think it must be in 2010, not so long ago. I, I've been brewing for a lot of years to sort of come up with an open source consultancy, kind of the same thing that we are uh, we're trying to do now with, with the big group thing. But, but uh, I've really been spending a lot of time uh, trying to figure out how that could be done. But I had some, some idea about what a consultancy was because I'm a lawyer. Uh, and uh, I'd actually found two really bright guys. And we spent something like half a year doing a business plan and had a lot of meetings. And I, I even signed up all the agreements and things like that and sent them to them. And everything was, I thought, well, finally it's going to happen. Uh, we're going to make this new kind of consultancy, the consultancy, the open consultancy of tomorrow. I didn't hear anything from them. And then I called them after two weeks and said, no, no, we, we're doing a company with more than gold. <laughs> <laughs> and that company uh, became friction. Uh, so um, I think that now you've got a, uh, you've got a personal angle to more. I think uh, to say he's very difficult to, to get once in a while. It's on the one hand, uh, the past five Far the biggest international bullshit I know. Uh, he's also by far one of the most visionary guys I know. And uh, let's let's see where he what what kind of uh, of those calls he's going he's going to meet tonight. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, yeah thank you very much, uh, Martin, for, for, a, for, a, for a quite nice introduction. Of, uh, more than, <laughs> fortunately, I got quite a few questions left. So, uh, <laughs> But uh, Morten, yeah, it's so nice to have you here, that you find your time. Uh, I know you came uh, directly from uh, DLD in Munich, uh, so, so thank you very much for taking all the time to do this. Uh, you asked for just uh, uh, some time to just get to know the crowd, so uh, if you want to get fire away with, with uh, what we talked about earlier. Yeah, well, thank you very much for, for inviting me. Thank you to Martin for not telling the worst part of me. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I think it's it's great. It's, it's 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 fantastic that you guys want to do this, uh, arrange it, all the hassle of it. And, and unfortunately, the last five years, I, I lost touch with this startup scene because at a certain, I think, age, it gets a little bit too much. Because I could probably have five or ten startups presenting to me every day, but I would, you know, I love to do all I can to, to both inspire and scare all of you not to do the mistakes that I've done, of course. But it's it's interesting to know how many of you guys are in a startup now, and how many is, does, has a real job and a paycheck from which it. <laughs> How many is in a startup with with, uh, with revenue over a million kroner this year? <laughs> I think that's it. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> uh, so just to check out your mic, your mic's on, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, you can put it over there. Oh, well, maybe I didn't turn it on. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so while you turn it on, um, you need to put up the flap. There's a flap. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. oh, yeah. yes, and then on. <coughs> is, is this better? Is this better? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. That's good. All right. So okay. how many is it a startup with more than a million corners? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. Okay, uh, yeah, so, so Morten, uh, let's, let, let's just take it from the beginning. Uh, so uh, you were born in 1972, right, in, uh, around the uh, Rostock area. Um, we had, uh, so as you know, we had uh, some of the day last time, and he was uh, born very close to this, you know, big uh, uh, travel travel guy, Simon Speaks, uh, you know, with all this uh, rich and whatever comes with that. But uh, what is uh, the Rostock area? I mean, like, did that, that you, yeah, I mean, what is... Well, it was it was actually in, in Yasi, it's more close to Kru. Okay, okay, okay. No, no way I read. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like all these the Danish names and green names. Yeah. Um, so that was um, uh, 400 uh, houses in a small village where there's absolutely nothing to do. And you had to be pretty careful not to fuck up too much because you needed to be friends with everyone. <laughs> and then the girls were okay like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so you, so that's why I became an entrepreneur, right? That's <laughs> uh, definitely why we formed our first advertising company because we watched Melrose, Melrose Place and there was a lot of chicks around us. <laughs> yeah. So, tell me more about that. Uh, you watch Melrose Place and you decide to start an advertising agency. How did that work? Well, basically, I, I, um, it started a little bit before. Um, it started when I was at university where I, um, I, I really was a misfit, misfit because I got into a lot of, or a couple of fights actually with, with the teachers there at these big auditoriums because they had, in, they had absolutely no interest in, in, in um, first of all, presentation layer. It was, it was ugly. They, they didn't care about whether we understood it because they were so proud of their job or so full of themselves. So, <laughs> so I got into really heavy fights there. And, in front of all these people, and, um, and I decided that it was probably not for me to go to university because I, I, I couldn't cope with the fact that we were learning, I mean, pretty advanced statistics, but there was no use cases. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I need to understand the use case for everything also when we talk about these businesses. So how does it actually work? How does it work when, you know, this small shop sells to this little guy? Or why don't we, where do you apply this stat? So I got a little bit confused. I mean, uh, yeah. I just didn't show up at university. <laughs> I didn't have to tell my parents. But I also played like professional handball at the same time. Um, so I called my dad and asked him for I know for some money for the big I mean, after first year I wanted to go out 
throughout Europe uh, and have some fun. And I called my dad and asked him for some money. He, he made a really successful startup from I was like 15 till I was uh, arrived in prison. And he told me that I mean, if there would be any money left when he died, he would have a, I mean, a, some, a, a pool aside pursuing Microsoft and Excel. <laughs> 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 so he's always been very generous to me. <laughs> but, um, but so I had to find something to do. But he gave me a clue and told me that I, I was pretty good at selling stupid. At my high school, I sold these student caps we have here um, to everyone, and, and I made a, a book and a t-shirt. I, I kept with the t-shirts from my friend. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, um, I hired a couple of guys, and we we went around. Uh, we went in some cars, and we went around the country and sold these student caps and got seventy-five percent of that market. Extremely in, in two years, and made a lot of money, um, and kept them under my bed and used them all for beers. <laughs> I forgot to pay VAT. <laughs> it was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, okay. I'm very, I mean, a very um, cash intensive. <laughs> okay, good imagine. So, so that turned into. Um, I didn't want to be that guy who's. All, I think I'm a little bit snob, snobbish, actually, despite my my bad way of dressing. Um, so I we we were three guys living in that apartment. That we agreed to to we lived in Odense, Odense, Odense at the time. And then we agreed to, to move to Copenhagen and start this uh, replica of Melrose Place. Okay, okay, all right. Cool, okay. You mentioned um, a handball. I mean, uh, why, why aren't you pushing on handball today? Uh, I think I'm a little bit too... Uh, I think Martin described it pretty well. You know, I also want to play handball. I mean, I wanted... I was, of course, the playmaker and I wanted... I wanted to do stuff that wasn't really possible. <laughs> and you know, it was a little bit of a conflict with the coach. Okay. I mean, when it worked, it looked amazing. <laughs> it also took a lot of, a lot of uh, heat from it. But I mean, we, we were we were national champions when we were, I mean, in this little city. There's nothing else to do when we were uh, 11 guys going to school. I mean, I was the smallest guy when we were, I mean, I looked like this when I was 14. So we were national champions all the time when we were. We were used to the to knowing how much it takes to become number one. So we're I mean, practicing three times, four times a week in in, in, in this local gym. Well, there was nothing else to do in the city, but but that, I think that uh, I didn't really. It was not challenging enough to do, to be in sports. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It seems like so. I mean, so so the way I read it was that that this was U eighteen U twenty one handball team, right? Uh, yeah, the national, yeah, 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 the youth national. Team. Yeah, yeah, youth yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I mean, I also read somewhere that they also came up with a couple of concepts. One for a, a computer print uh, uh, concept for digital print shops, and a ski concept for last and rise. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah tell us about that. Yeah, so the print was. It was a very good education to start this company with the student caps because we had we we there was still a site for probably most of you know. Them. They, they had the, the caps, but, but we made, we just made a package with the cap and this blue book. <coughs> and the book when we started was on old printing, but then the digital printing came. So we made this disc, that was my first application. We made this blue disc that they could sit there writing on it and we got it back okay. with pictures in it. You know. So we, we organ, I organized that and got, the, we got access to the first um, digital printer from uh, Observe. And then organized as well, also I mean, in, a, in a small database with to how to handle the the T-shirts because every every class wanted to have their own unique T-shirts. It was quite I mean, it was a quite logistic nightmare, especially when you're young and drunk half the time. <laughs> um, and then we ended up, I think, shipping eighty thousand items very very early. So yeah, it was, it was pretty strange that those the year of students got their caps. <laughs> they <actually> got them. <laughs> Okay, cool. That's, that, that is really quite amazing. So how many people were you in this blue book? Was it only you or...? No, no, that was me and then my best friends. Okay. So I, I mean, I always... It, it became a, a problem later, but I always just hate with, you know, free beer when we went out and pizza. Mm -hmm. But you don't get the highest quality of work. <laughs> 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 really good friends. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so I'm thinking that... Uh, um, uh, uh, 
I mean, where most people would probably just think, okay, so we go buy a cab and then we buy all the other stuff. I mean, why do you think that you came to the conclusion that it must be so much easier for people just to buy a, buy a package and then, you know, really got, got this thing going? I mean, it must have taken some sort of, I don't know, decision or, I mean, yeah. It's just, it's just packaging. I think most of what I've done, you know, I, I, Martin was not tough enough for me to say, I'm, I'm not especially smart, but I'm pretty, I mean, I really like packaging. And that was just packaging. I took this. Book. I bought a. a I mean, you guys are not old enough to remember Tina Cat. She was the smoking, <laughs> smoking. <laughs> so I bought a picture of her without lights, and then I got some guy to to, to retouch a uh, uh, Photoshop a, a, a hat in there, and I put the book on her side and the T-shirt, <laughs> and then people got it. You no, know, that was even that was easy to get it. And then we sent, we, we, we distributed this on posters in all the schools. And it was obvious instead of having the hassle of doing three things, it's just three in one. I mean, it, was, it was fairly simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it was, there was no rocket science. Again, it was just packaging. It's, yeah, sure, it's, sure. It's a, it's a lot of, you know, it, it's it's very repeated in a lot of the stuff I've done. You know, so as Martin referred to with Skype, I mean, it was done when we also when we we, we talked about it, it was stupid. What Jan what Janus was saying, you wanted they wanted to do. A, they wanted to call it Skype or, <coughs> and do voice over IP because it was done. It was inside the Microsoft Messenger client. We, we, when we had demos for clients at the advertising agency, we always you know, went into the early versions of Messenger. And this is strange because they just killed Messenger. We went into the <laughs> early versions of Messenger, call, I mean, click the call button and call somebody on Fifth, uh, yeah. on, on fifth Avenue. That was pretty killer for the clients. You know, fuck, is that how the internet works? <laughs> and, and, and we were always, you know, fighting with the, the head of the marketing, head of Coca Cola and Casper. They they seriously believed that it would be text TV winning over the internet because this internet was flaky. I mean, it's it's easy yeah. now, but I mean, they had conversion rates on text TV. You know, and we all hang in there, you know, watching sports results and news it's on text TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Okay. okay. Yeah. But this was the one that you sold to the EU. So to the EU, yeah, okay, which, was, which is one of the largest tech protection companies in the world. Yeah, okay, fine. So, so we built a, a, cult, a very good culture with 100 people. We were very, I mean, mostly very good at sales. And everyone from that team has stepped out, also the guys in the basement, because they put me in the basement to do this incubator because I, mean, I, I simply can't, I, I really have problems saying the same thing. <coughs> I can say a lot of bullshit, but I don't want to repeat it. But I always changed it, you know. So if there was three marketing departments and Coca-Cola, they got each a different story. You know, I, I didn't want to repeat myself, so it was a little bit of a problem to have me there. I mean, I, we also got we we got the chance actually there. That's why we, we also were able to sell it um, to build. Till we were so lucky at that time. It was remember nineties. I remember ninety. I through two or three, I went with my dad to buy the second phone for his home. It was, I mean, the, the monopoly till Denmark it was for four smaller companies. So it was not legal to have more than one phone, but we got a permission to buy one more. And from there on, things just went nuts. You know, it, went, it was liberated, so we could come in competitors, in competitors to till to till Denmark. And we were so lucky to win the client of till two. Which we all know now, I mean, we have invented the brand Get to It. Mm -hmm. And we could just we could test everything we wanted. They had endless but I mean very large budgets. And we, we could convert people to come to, to to change their phone number to this thing because they could just say half price. So we, we got a lot of learnings there and we got to test all the crazy stuff we could imagine. They would just from the headquarters in Sweden say, Yeah, cool. cool. And then we, we really got to test stuff that we so back then in 96 or something, we, 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 we launched a whole full-fetched portal with everything we see now with the, um, you, when, you, when you went on, locked in with your, uh, with your route, with your, with your modem, you would start collecting points. And those points would show up in the browser. You know, we had email, we had auctions, we had, you know, you could, you could upload a joke, you could get paid, paid for it. We, we had 100 people working on that global portal for, uh, for Taylor 2. And that I mean we saw that it, it didn't really I mean, nobody really cared that much, but we 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 learned everything so early and tested it on real users. I mean, a lot of you guys are probably doing stuff now that is of course more advanced, but it's, some of the features are the same. But we played with this stuff in in ninety six to ninety nine, 
when the browser didn't really work, when there was no web server, I mean, SaaS was not invented as a word, and, and, and everything was, you know, the Microsoft um, web server was, was, was crap. You know, it, was, it, was, it was really hard and, and a lot of red tape, uh, but, but those learnings, of course, is, it makes it much easier to, to do the stuff that I first of all did later, but also having <coughs> played with this with some of the most, I mean, uh, some of the leading companies in the world as a consultant, and I mean, I have to also uh, advise most of you guys to, to have a, one or two years in consulting because you have to you get into so many businesses. So not, not only did we get a lot of business areas, we also got the technology and got the got the chance to play with it. I mean, it's very interesting. Cool. Okay, okay. So so this was all while you were working on the uh, oh, no, sorry, a new idea, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was the new idea yeah. story. We were pretty focused on that. We we did some yeah, yeah. some spin-offs or scrum board projects like this e magazine. <laughs> Okay. I mean, it was it was as good as TechCrunch is today. <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, how hard do you land a customer like like to the two back in back in '96? I mean, it must be quite a. I mean, it must be quite a yeah, I think that the best way to say this is in Danish, maybe what have you six to ten. But yeah, of course, in a lot of presentations, yeah, okay. and a lot of enthusiasm, and okay. and also quite some. I mean, we had nothing else to do than surf. Porn and test websites. <laughs> so we were probably the guys who knew the most. In it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we didn't present that porn stuff to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so, uh, so if I remember correctly, this this was also one of the first uh, places where you where you mentioned meeting uh, Janus and Niklas Sidstrom. Uh, I think I read from them before that they yeah they took some of your business away or is that a story? That yeah, they that they worked at Tilda too. Ah, okay. So they okay. came in there as a client. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. And they took all our business away. Ah, okay, okay, okay. They, they outsourced it to somewhere else, and I think they did some dodgy stuff behind the scenes to get them to code <laughs> some of the some Kazan, and then they became Skype. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah. All right, that's, okay. that's why I hang out with them. Yeah. I, mean, I like them. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, like, my partners were that, not that crazy about me hanging out with them since they just were about to kill our business. Okay. <laughs> but I, I saw something special. And, yeah, okay, cool, okay. Okay, okay. okay. So, 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 what were your initial impression of Janus and Nicholas? I mean, why, why do you think you ended up working, working with them? This guy? I like them. I like them. As short as that. Yeah. I didn't believe in their ideas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I thought Kazaa was stupid. Okay. But they were lucky to launch it just when Napster closed down. Yeah, okay. And then I was lucky not to invest because they got hunted from I mean, any legal rights lawyer, record industry association of, the, of, of America. Were hunting them for those three years. I mean, it was a joke. We had to meet different places. They would wear hats. And <laughs> but it was real. I mean, they, they tracked them down. They wanted to subpoena them. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. So I mean, I, I luckily didn't invest in it, but I did some, I did some business development for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like in some porn affiliate. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to make money. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so, okay. so back to Skype, I mean, how did it all start? How did you, so so, so you met them at tier 2, uh, was this when, when, when they pitched you the Skype idea? Or, I mean, no, no, then, the, then the, we sold our, our, our agents at Neo Idea and, and then I hang out with them for a couple of years. We were, we were we were involved in IT business development in Kazaa. We they helped out with, with my full god, this mm -hmm. antivirus company. I, 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 took, I took a lot of the money I made from selling the, the advertising company and, and put into a, a Romanian, <coughs> Romanian team that made, made the full guard. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, suddenly it, they, they started talking about, actually it was, it was more advanced than what, what, uh, what Martin just said, because they actually wanted to do which I was not really aware of when I took them to this meeting. They wanted to do a Wi-Fi network, and that was called Skype okay. with an R. Okay. And then every, I mean, they went and pitched it to 10, 15 venture capital funds, and they all said blank no because that remember that, that this is back when when Wi-Fi came on a PCM CIA card, you had to be a fucking geek to install it. I mean, not to talk about the router. But it was so crazy that you would suddenly have internet without the cable. It was mind-boggling. And just walk around. It was really, it was crazy. So there was obviously a business idea, idea there. 
but I mean, you could never fly. And then some of the coders in, in, uh, in Estonia said, well, fuck it, let's try with, with VoIP. And then take the R away called Skype. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and, 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 I, and they also asked, asked me to invest more, I mean, more in it, but I, I didn't really believe in it. I, I thought it was a little bit of a stupid idea. Okay. Or not a little bit, very stupid idea. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Um, so, so was the Skype an adventure all the dance for roses, or do you have, have any good war stories to go with the, with the Skype? No, it's very classic. It's nearly like a Hans Christian Anderson, you know, so <laughs> nobody wanted to put, invest in it. Forty venture capital funds said no thing. I mean, just <laughs> threw, threw us out. And um, and suddenly, you know, some of them were interested. Actually, Nordic Venture Partners got really interested like a month before we launched. Um, a guy called uh, Harald Hartenbaum out of the Draper funds came in, put in a little bit of money. I put in a little bit of money, but basically I paid Nikos and Genesis apartments. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I could, I also got, a, I started to get a little bit, you know, fuck, this could be crazy because I got some of the test clients and I talked to uh, you know, Kevin, who was also in the wall in Australia from a hotel room in Bulgaria. I talked on a, the lowest possible worst modem. At the first, I remember that first time I talked to Kevin for, for two, we just let it open for two hours, perfect crystal clear sound because we bought a really good sound coating. And that was like when I did call my dad and said, well, maybe we should buy a little bit of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I also got a little bit, you know, maybe I was still not, not sure. And then I, I, I helped quite a lot with, you know, the, the interface and the design and, because that was what I did back in our agency. I mean, a lot of the, the, the graphics. Mm -hmm. So we got the best guys in, in, in Copenhagen. Ole the, the Lund did the logo. And we, we had, yeah. I really liked that part. And then suddenly I could say, okay, okay, this is gonna work, A, and be crystal clear. And the sound cards are actually coming into most PCs. Remember, it came from, from desktop <coughs> computers, like monsters we had with nearly too much sound from the from the cooling to actually have a sound card in it. Suddenly we had laptops that were affordable and then there was a sound card and a microphone plug. That 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 I mean coming together made pretty good sense of when the technology also worked and we could make it look good and simple. Because ICQ kind of how many know ICQ I mean it, it looked so fucked up you had no clue where to click. So just stylish, simple Scandinavian versus this weird thing. It, it looked like it could fly, and then everybody, I mean, yeah, and the, the funds didn't really like it. We went to everyone because we had pretty good access, and, and it's always been like from very early on. I think I've always been invited. Also, I'm very, I was very proud to be invited <laughs> to, to Martin's place with some very good thinkers like um, Tony Watson, was my new home, and Thomas Bess and Newfield. I mean, there was it was a good crowd of thinkers, and, and I was very proud just to be invited. I was not an intellectual; I didn't really read the books. So, and said, but, but we were always invited also to the funds because I mean they had a they always have a lot of money because of the pension fund structures, and they always wanted to hear what was going on. And suddenly, this also started to be a little bit hot. And then we launched it, and the first day we had like fifty thousand downloads. And it just went skyrocketing, you know? and I still remember that the that the, the, the CEO at uh, Credit Suisse, which is one of the biggest banks in the world, who rejected us, he, he wrote on the on the web form, "I'm sorry, guys, but now I really like it. Could I invest personally?" <laughs> 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 then you know, then you know you're, uh, you're getting it. Okay. 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 Cool. So, so I mean, I mean, I have to ask you. I mean, what what's it like when somebody hands you a check of two point five billion billion US dollars? Because that's, that's the amount of sky. So, um, I think Martin referred to me being a little bit difficult. So, um, I actually had I had I had this. You know, when Skype grew really fast, they brought in some people, and and I, I'm a little bit. You know, my holding company was called Ideology. So I'm a little bit in that, uh, and I didn't really like the, I didn't really talk to anyone at Skype for the last two years. I didn't even know they were selling it. I mean, I talked to Microsoft, everybody called me to try to buy it, but I, I mean, I had no clue what, 
what they wanted to do with it, but it'd be the end. I was a little, I mean, I was involved with, I just hang out with Nicholas and James whenever we, we wanted to, to have fun and talk a little bit product, but I was not involved at all. Okay, okay. It, was a, it was a massive company. Okay, yeah. I think Skype burned $100 million a year. They sold it. Okay. So I was not really involved in that, in okay. that part, but of course it was it was great. I mean, it saved my ass. I, I got a lot of money. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. But of course, of course over invested. In, yeah. I, I many times spent the money I got from the agency. <laughs> All right, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, talking about spending the money, one of your, uh, probably in Denmark, most spe spectacular ways of spending money was this news of uh, this newspaper uh, that we have in, the, in uh, here. Uh, I, I guess we, we should talk a bit about that. Uh, so, so can you tell a bit about what happened? I mean, what was what was it that you saw in in uh, in, in, in News of that made you uh, uh, invest in it? So, first of all, it was probably stupid, and I'm stupid that I did it. Like, I can repeat that a couple of times. <laughs> but, but in reality, we have to, I mean, things are always in bubbles. We, we refer to the 2000 bubble because things were crazy. But you have to remember in, in 2006 to 2008, <coughs> I mean, the banks would lend three groups 105% to buy a building. Everything was possible. The, I mean, the economy, the economy was flying. I mean, I, I, had, a, I had my banker call me the banker, my, the guy from the uh, Forster's bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He uh, called me and asked me, like, he heard that I was getting into art, and he was fuck all on art. I mean, I was interested, I always did a lot of graphics myself, but he heard I was getting into art, so if I wanted, you know, they could facilitate me, facilitate me with a loan of like five to ten million coins, we could buy some interesting stuff. Right, okay. So, okay. so this is the time we're at, six to not to eight. On a parallel note, I had <clears throat> the fantastic mother of my children. She's from Iceland. So I was, I have been coming, I have been coming to Iceland from 98 every year for Christmas. And the first two years there was this uh, Morgan blotted the, the paper. And when you're in Iceland with your in-laws and you live there for seven days, you mean you start reading the paper. <laughs> in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very dark and very cool, I'll say. Um, and then after, I mean, after uh, a couple of years, this uh, really nice paper stopped being. It's actually fun to read a nice ending paper because we have some words, but it stopped being there on the table. There was suddenly there was another paper which was just. I mean, it probably took a couple of Christmases until I asked why the fuck is the other paper and why is this coming? Oh, it's free, you know. It's uh, it just comes in. It's very good quality. The editor is a nuthead, but really cool. He's really opinionated, and it's good quality. It's probably even better journalism than the established. And then during uh, 2004 and 2005, those Christmases, it was, I mean, it was obvious that they killed all the other papers, and they bought the whole media scene and everything with this young um, guy who, who, who spun that around. And then they started, you know, inviting me for dinners and asking whether they should do it in Denmark because if we, if, we, if we do the same trick, just give it for free, and with a very high quality, it might work. And um, since I was pretty loaded from Skype, I was a little bored. The fantastic mother of my wife was not, I mean, we didn't really agree, so we're getting divorced. I think I needed some project to, to do and to, to occupy my brain. <clears throat> we, we jumped it. And they jumped it first. They put, they put in a billion Danish corner, and then they were kind of out of money. And then they offered me to, to, to take it over, and even with another 300 million um, to, to keep on going. Uh, this is to, to December 2007. And I had a, there was a really good investment banker in there called Lars Lindstrom, who had been working with Rothschilds and the best banks in the world. He really knew what he was talking about. The editor was good, the team was pretty good, and the journalism was good. So when they asked me to take it over, I was like, well, if I can get a backer, one more guy, Nicholas and Janus, they were like, uh, sounds a little dangerous. I mean, they were tempted as well. Uh, but I, I called a friend of a friend, a guy, a guy called um, 
Li Kaixin, who is probably the world's fourth rich, richest man. He made money with Skype, he liked us. And his son, he liked it a lot. So we agreed that, unfortunately I did it on a handshake, <laughs> to, um, that he would fund it as well, and because he had some newspapers around the world, and if this would work, I mean, it, it was burning 45 million kroner when I took it over <laughs> per month. Um, <laughs> And, um, but it, we have, it, it looked like, you know, remember, it was still, the economy was going crazy, and every, all the other papers, they launched a competitor, but it was obvious they couldn't keep on. And I had Li Kaixin behind me, so what the fuck, I mean, <laughs> could ever, you know, touch me. So I somehow got to sign those papers, we, 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 took, it, we took it over, uh, I mean, and I got a call from Li Kaixin that they were not that interested anyway. <laughs> Because they saw some stuff going on. Something was weird about the economy. And, oh, uh, fuck it. I mean, then I had to find other sources. So then it became a fundraising, a fundraising exercise like nothing else. So I took every asset I had. I took my Bogart shares. I took everything I had, sold it, poured. I mean, I found 45 million. We took it down to 30 million, 24 million. I mean, it became better and better and better every month, but it's still a lot of money to. to and to bring to work per month. But and we became during uh, April two thousand eight. We became the the media with who sold most lines of advertising, millimeters of advertising. So I mean, it worked. The problem was we couldn't get the price we wanted, but that was only a matter of time. So and then, then I started calling around. You know. It was, I heard again from other people that there's something wrong with the economy. But it was impossible to understand that something should, could, could be wrong with the economy because everybody was a, was a millionaire. Every friend I had, you know, wherever he worked or his parents worked, they just got a new kitchen, they got a loan in a house. They, I mean, everything was fantastic. Everybody was burning money like there was no day tomorrow. So I couldn't understand what, what was wrong. I mean, why these really rich guys said there was something wrong. And they stopped investing, they stopped the smartest guys, you know, they got out of everything those those three, four months. Until uh, until August, where we got I think the burn down to fifteen million only. Again? Yeah, it's from forty five. Yeah. It's getting closer. And the the other papers stopped their competing products. I mean, you, you probably remember they all had a free sheet so we delivered to the door. And our system was getting better and better. This last guy, you know, we, we went out on with the Polish um, delivery boys, we had the 750 Polish delivery boys who started at you know, uh, 11 o'clock in the evening to, to get all the papers out. So we optimized that with GPS. We, 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 it, was a, it was a pretty cool exercise. It was a little stressful that I knew that I had, I mean, I had my dick under like a sushi. <laughs> <laughs> if this thing wouldn't work, I would be kind of wiped out all the way. So, um, and then, then suddenly it was obvious in August, September uh, 2008 that we couldn't make it. Because then in one shot the crisis was there and advertising spent immediately stopped. So we were back to 45 minutes minus per month. And I had lost everything I had. I mean, I invested everything because I, mean, I never lost the finance, I mean, any business deals before. And I thought, I mean, I'll, 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 we'll fix it. I mean, we were a good team, Lars and me. And also, actually, our, our the, the CEO, I mean, the, the, the chairman and the CEO we, we put in were they were really good guys. I mean, they were, they were aggressive like no one else. And we, I got into a fight with them later because yeah, that, that's what happened. You know, you know, success has many fathers, and I mean, a, a failure is an orphan. <laughs> so, 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 um, so, so everything was was suddenly it was just obvious that we could never make it, and I, and I didn't want to renew. I think also anyone here who's into a startup, you, will, you live in denial. You know that unless you're extremely lucky or win the lottery, you're going to die in six months. I mean, I was used to that, but, but here it was, it was for real, and I, and I wrote on, the, uh, on, on this whole deal I'm with me personally. So there was, there was no way back. Against all my lawyers and everybody's advice. But I thought it was such a good deal that I got the paper that would just spend a billion, and I've, if I could put in another 500 million, everything would be cool. Okay. So that's that's the story, yeah. and, and 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 it's not like I regret it. I think it's the best thing that ever happened was that I was bankrupt because otherwise I would have been really nutty. I mean, 
<laughs> I was, I was, sometimes I was discussing with myself whether I had to walk around the suit and then I just walk over it. You know? <laughs> 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 Very nice. Uh, yeah, because I mean, when you went bankrupt, I mean, you went from uh, from like uh, several hundred, hundred billions, like millions, I guess, and then to minus uh, several millions. I mean, and then and then you went all the way, way, way back up again. In uh, I think it's been about a year, something like that. I mean, how how is that possible? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Well, first of all, I I, I in, when you're young, there should be a law against really young people getting rich because it's it's really I mean it's, it's money is so hard to understand. So of course I, I mean I had a lot of money and I would spend it on stuff that I liked. And I liked the start of crazy ideas and because I was which was my was my like big luck, but also my big things, I had a little very little chunk of sky and made a lot of money. So I thought it was a great strategy just to give a to buy very small pieces of companies and then one of them would go into the gazelles. I just forgot that how many companies it takes to make a Skype. Okay. <laughs> so I had a hundred different investments. So just cleaning up my financials, in what companies do we own, what, what is it worth, uh, it took six, seven months. But I have this, uh, I had this uh, former partner, Alex, uh, who showed up at the door uh, just when I went, just when it happened and said, hey, I believe in you, I'll fix everything on the legal side, I'll talk to everyone. I know there's nothing shady here, I mean, because I mean, we, we just, I just spent all my own money. It was, it's fairly simple. So, so he was like, I, I take ten percent of your future forever. I mean, he didn't want my kids in my life. But, you know, ten percent of my future forever. We, we made a deal, and that's when he would fix everything backwards. And I mean, you can do this. Uh, it's fine, I call it a structured deal out of the bankruptcy, so you agree with everyone, 70% of the people you owe money and 70% of the votes, and then you can pay 10% of your debt. Okay. And we he, and he spent six, seven months getting that in place with the, the guy who suddenly owned it, all, my, all my stuff was suddenly owned by uh, this Kowalta, uh, what is the name of it? Hey, the executor, trustee. the trustee. So, so there was a lawyer sitting up like four, 700 meters from me who owned everything I had, and they came and took all my car. They, they took my car. They took, they took, they took my two cars. They took my art. They took everything. And during that while, so, so, so Alex fixed all of that backwards, and he, of course he asked me to find out in the out of the money we owed him to other people. How much is 10 percent? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he called me sometimes and reminded me what kind of money I had to lend around. <laughs> okay. So I had to lend like a 16 and a half million kroner to buy myself free. Okay. And, um, but, and I managed to do that. But they had the competences to do uh, an, an invoicing network that would be in the cloud and it could actually be free. So the very large companies like Nike, DHL, the largest companies in the world, they could suddenly kill this pretty weird process where they, uh, I mean, a la the Danish um, dairy company, they have two containers every week driven to Poland where some ladies retype their invoices. I mean, most type, most invoices come from a computer. And they type, they print it out, send it, and then somebody else types it back into a computer. Okay. <laughs> so that that we um, we agreed to, to see if we could get. This idea done in the cloud, and I tweeted out <coughs> that I mean, we wanted to do it, and we got 40,000 hours committed. People, people again who wanted to support my new crazy vision, uh, they would code 40,000 different companies, eight different companies that would code 40,000 hours, and then they got some equity in this new company. Unfortunately, at that time, I was not free of the bankruptcy, so I couldn't own anything. <laughs> it was a little, but I mean, I had a really nice bonus, so that, could, that, that worked out fine. And then we, um, yeah, then we agreed to do it. I found the first uh, couple of million kroner, and then uh, everything in the last five years has been a, a crazy ride. When we found out it was a little hard to sell it, and I, I remember that I had a good relationship with the guys from eBay and PayPal. So we got PayPal as an investor, and everything has just been. I think we've raised like 70, 80 million dollars now. We're, it's the largest investment platform in the world already. And, uh, and I'm now spending all my time, or most of my time, building apps on trade ships. 
because restless as I was, you know, I got into huge fights with everyone because they're so fucking lame and slow that they don't build a bank, they didn't build a factoring company, they didn't build all these nice tools that should be on top of trade ship, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, this year I formed, last year we formed the factoring company. So whenever you send an, an invoice, any of these beautiful consulting companies and startups here, we we'll send an invoice to, um, to the British health system, then <clears throat> it will be, they have to do it on trade ship. It's the only way you can get it, them to accept it. And then I, we, we cre I created a fund with some, some really good guys in, uh, in, in the Danish pension funds, so that when the National Health Service the, uh, in, in the UK, they approve the invoice and say, hey, thank you very much, we accept it, we'll pay you in 60 days. <clears throat> At the same time, I get that signal, so I'll offer them, I'll offer to pay you instantly because you need money for the salary on Friday and the new server. And so, so the classic factoring fund. Um, so that's that's one thing that has to be on trade shift. And then um, I'm also doing a, a global like a payment thing. So so all the these startups, smaller companies can have a, a, a simple link in all the invoices you send out. This should be a payment link, of course. But it's pretty hard to become a merchant in Denmark it takes to be approved to accept credit cards just on an e-commerce store. It takes about six, nine months, and they weeks here. And then we made a, so, so that's what I'm doing right now, creating a, a global virtual bank so that everybody can become a merchant. And of course, you should have the ability to get paid inside your invoice. But I mean, that doesn't even work in trade shift today because PayPal, they didn't want it. People don't even know they own a part of trade shift because it's so big. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay, so, so so we are we're running out of time, but I but I, but I got two small questions that I was going to give give a short answer, and then we open it up to the floor. Uh, one of them is on a more uh, personal side. So for you, so you've been invited to to talk to Clinton. I think in the what was it the Health Access Initiative or mm -hmm. or uh, uh, but also. Uh, you've been on Nicker Island together with Richard Branson. I mean, how, how does one get the attention of Richard Branson and, and what did you talk about? So if you can... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a long, that's a long question, but... You know. yeah. <clears throat> well, getting the attention seems to be my thing. I mean, not that I didn't dream of it, but suddenly there was just a letter, you know, from both of them, if I wanted to, to drop by. Mm -hmm. But I'm a little bit like uh, Bob Geldof, you know? Mm -hmm. He's a really lousy musician, but he, he knows the right guys. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> it's yeah. the same. I'm not really good at anything, but I know and I, I know most people. So somebody else would say, "Hey, he's crazy, but maybe we should invite him as well because at least it gets you know fun." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, okay. okay. Uh, I, I think that's part of it, and then okay. we, we've done a couple of, of, of I've done a couple of things with. with, with I mean, it's pretty weird also to be invited by your biggest hero. Yeah, yeah. Because not that I wasn't starstruck. <laughs> but the first thing he suggested was that we should play um, Guess a Dick. Okay. So everybody should take their pants off so that the, the women should guess what dick they were doing. We instantly found him. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's cool. Uh, okay, so my final question uh, is, uh, uh, so you seem to be a guy that does a lot of stuff, so I kind of try to finish with the question that's like, what's next for Morton Lund? But it just seems like you have so much stuff to, that you're doing already, so can you say anything about what, what's next for you, or is that just... Uh... Yeah, I just came back from this DLD thing. If you have a chance or have the money, you should try to go there next year. It's in, it's in Munich. It's a, it's a really good event. One of the few events I, I really can... Uh, uh, recommend, but what I, you know, I, I live with all the guys who invest, all the funds they invite, they invite the venture capital from the pension, they, they invite me to, to you know, discuss how do we do crazy stuff because we can't get any interest on our money. I mean, there's a couple of, probably some of you didn't spend your whole ESU and the heritage you got from your grandmother. I mean, if you look at the bank, they give you zero interest. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to have money in the bank. So, so that paradigm is, is big, there's a lot of money out there. And then I see a lot of smart people, really smart people raising a fund. But that model I tried. I also had a, a venture fund with Jim, with Jim Draper, who's also another of my heroes. So that didn't work. So, so right now, 
as I just said before, everything I do needs to have some kind of an angle on trade shift. Because trade shift is not only a smart, shit boring tool, but it's also going to be a platform. And I can only urge everyone here to, to do their things, of course I'm biased, but so building stuff on a platform that millions of businesses will have to use, because they will be forced to it. If you want to send an invoice to Nike, you have to use trade shift. End of story. So that means you can suddenly you know, make apps on that platform, that, that app store will actually be for real for businesses. It's shit boring, but, but that I want to, it has to be something like that. So I'm, I'm doing a, <clears throat> with some, some cool young guys, I'm doing a payout card. So you get a credit card, as, you get a small account, and then the, the company here, and the company can pay out their salaries to all the employees on a card. Oh, that's not rocket science. But in a startup, at least, you want to have this card so that the money goes to the card to the employee. And if nothing happens, it will, it will also come up and say, hey, is this a company expense or is it just private? <coughs> of course, private is default because you want to you know, buy a pair of new shirts or shorts or whatever. But, but small tools like that, and, and then on trade shift again, because then it suddenly fits in to your financial system. That, that, is the, that is how I want to invest my time, because I still don't have money. Okay. But really. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Because I'm too, I'm too stingy to sell the shares I have. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, cool. So that, that is the thing. It has to somehow connect into trade shifts. And then, of course, there are exceptions. Yeah. Okay, sure. Like this air help we're doing, like, which is, we, they got, I mean, they're also three crazy guys. They got to Y Combinator now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. They got selected, which is just, it's, it's a place where you can you're reimbursed if you're three hours late with your plane. And then this open XO, which is a Wi-Fi, <laughs> 15 years later, <laughs> which is a, a Wi-Fi gateway to, that we sell to hotels and stadiums and malls, which is also taking up. It's a little bit hard for me to find the trade shift angle, but I'll, I'll fix it. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Mon. I think we have to. All right, okay. but, uh, but then we'll stay for a few minutes at least uh, in the bar, and that's where everyone is going right now, so please give me a hand. <laughs>